In descriptive statistics, oftentimes it's helpful to make a box plot of our data set to see what the distribution looks like. A box plot at one time was referred to as a box and whisker plot. So if you hear box and whisker, it's also meaning the same thing as a box plot. Now here we want to find five key values out of your data set. Your smallest value, your lower quartile number, your median, your upper quartile number, and your largest data value is most of the time sufficient to make our box plot. So when we have larger sets of data, we would probably enter that into a calculator or a software package and ask the operation to calculate the specifics about the distribution. And oftentimes, those values are reported within the information about the distribution. Here, our data set's fairly small, so we'll just do it by hand. So we have our smallest data value, two. We want to put it in order first to find these values. Then the next value is 43. And then after 43, we have 49. And then 50, 51, 51, 53, 54, then 60, 62, and 63. So here we put the values in increasing order. Now to find the median, we want to find the position that the median sits in or with a smaller data set we could actually work our way towards the middle. Remember the median is the data value that's in the middle of the distribution once you've ordered your numbers from smallest to largest. Now to find the position of the median, We can find that by taking the number of data values we have. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 data values, plus 1, and divide by 2. And that tells us the spot within the ordered set of data values to look for our median. So this gives me 12, divide by 2, or 6th position in. So when I start with my lowest value, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, this is my value of my median, the one that sits in the sixth position in using that formula for the position of the median. So 51 is the median of this distribution. Now the smallest data value is 2. And the largest data value is 63. The last two things we need are the lower quartile value and the upper quartile value, commonly referred to as Q1 for the lower quartile and Q3 for the upper quartile. Now to find these, we want to find for the lower quartile the median of the lower half of the data set. In this specific example, my median was an actual number in the data set because I had an odd number of data values when I started. When that occurs, you don't use the median number when you're looking at how to split up your distribution to find your lower quartile and your upper quartile. If you had another distribution that you had an even number of data values in and you averaged the middle two numbers to get the median, then you use the numbers on either side of that split that you had between the two in order to figure out what your lower half of data values and your upper half. But here I won't use the 51 because it was an actual data value from our data set and that particular 51. Now, when we're looking at finding the lower quartile, we want to find the median of this lower half of the data set. And since there's very few of them, we'll just go ahead and reference it. So as I go towards the value that I would get in the middle, I see that the Q1 is at 49. For Q3, I'll do the median of the upper half of the data set. So when I reference in, I see my Q3 is at 60.
Now, I'm a little bit hesitant about drawing the box plot for this because my two is so far off from the other values that it might be something called an outlier. And an outlier we figure of about out about in terms of the number of interquartile ranges it is on either side of our um, lower quartile and our upper quartile. So what we want to do is see if that truly is an outlier. outlier. Now our interquartile range, I, Q, R, is just the span of values, the range between the Q3 and the Q1. So my interquartile range is the span between my 49 and my 60. So we just find that by taking 60 minus my 49, and I get that my interquartile range is 11. Now the definition for an outlier is if it falls more than one and a half interquartile ranges below the lower quartile, or if it's one and a half interquartile range values above the upper quartile. So that's what we're going to do next. I just take 1.5 times my interquartile range value here is 11, and 1.5 times 11 is 16.5. So what we want to do is see if this 2 is smaller than taking my Q1 number, my 49, and subtracting this 16.5. Well, if I take 49 and subtract my 16.5, I'm going to get 32.5. And 2 is definitely smaller than 32.5. So 2 is an outlier. So we're going to mark that with an asterisk because it's an outlier. And actually uses our smallest value, the next number in, the 43. So again, let's see how we test that out. Our Q1 is... 49. And I want to know if my 2 is further to the left on the number line than 1.5 of my interquartile range away from that Q1, lower than the Q1. So when we take Q1 and we subtract 1.5 times the interquartile range, the value specifically for this problem is Q1 is 49 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range, we figured with the 1.5 times 11, so minus the 16.5, so that gives me my 32.5 value. Now if I did that for Q3, Q3 plus my 1.5 times the interquartile range would be Q3 is 60, plus the 16.5, and that gives me 76.5. And I didn't have any data values that went that high. Now that we have the information about our um, five key pieces of information that we have our outlier and we looked at how those outliers occur, we're ready to do the box plot. So let's make our number line for our box plot. Remember we want to have uniform increments along a number line in order to do the box plot. And I have an outlier way down at 2 and values that go up to 63. So probably what we'll do is just start at 0 here and increment by 10s. So we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70 and trying to see if you can keep pretty much uniform increments between those as you set up your number line. Now, because 2 is an outlier, I want to mark it, but I want to mark it as an asterisk, and we'll get to that after we do the box part of the box plot. So what we want to do is make a box that starts at 49, our lower quartile, that ends at 60, our upper quartile, and that has a vertical line marked at the median. So we have 49 is where we want to start our box, and it ends at 60.
and then we have a vertical line at the median, 51. So we show that for our box, part of our box plot. Now we want to take a whisker out to the largest value, which is 63. So we bring a line out to 63, and the whisker down to normally would go to the smallest value, but it was an outlier. So we'll go down to the next smallest number that isn't an outlier. And remember the conditions for the outlier was anything that was going to be lower than the 32.5. So our 43 is still within the values that would be reasonable for the distribution. So we'll have our 43 is what we'll whisker down to on this side. And then we want, we want to show that we had that outlier, so we'll just put an asterisk where the 2 is. So we'll mark these values just so that you can see when you look at the um, clip where each of these values are. So this is your 43. The box started at the lower quartile, 49. The vertical line was at the median, 51. The end of the box was at the upper quartile, 60. And then the whisker at the top, the largest value, 60. So there we've done our modified box plot is what they sometimes call this when they actually show the outlier.